Coming up on this episode of Outlook TV, Victoria's Pride Parade and Festival. The Blue Heron Lawn Bowling League. Jake and Sean's Big Gay Affair. And much, much more. Hello and welcome to Outlook TV. I'm Rebecca Wyman. And I'm Robert Mackay. And you're watching the Queer Magazine news show that brings you the stories that matter the most from coast to coast. We're going to kick it off in Vancouver with the Blue Heron Lawn Bowling League. Mm-hmm. All the grass stains and balls you can ask for, Emily's got the coverage. Hello viewers, it's Emily Ann Fraser and I'm here with my friends from Outlook TV. Today we are at the Stanley Park Lawn Bowling Club. It's the largest lawn bowling club in Vancouver. So grab your loafers, we're going bowling. We're playing lawn bowling. So Thursday nights, it's the Blue Erin League uh, at the Stanley Park Lawn Bowling Club. And the Blue Erin League is now in its third year. It's a uh, LGBTQ uh, league. Uh, we're an inclusive team, so it's not just for gays and lesbians, it's for everyone. The Stanley Park Lawn Bowling Club is celebrating their 100th year in Stanley Park. So uh, we had a, a huge celebration weekend uh, in June. So the club was looking for more members and one of their new members uh, was already in the, on the gay curling club. So, so he had the idea of um, inviting, sending an invitation to all the gay sports association in Vancouver. And that year, the registration doubled, so they got 100 new members plus their 100 existing members. And uh, that maintained for the last three years, so now we're the biggest lawn bowling club in Canada. It's a really comfortable way to meet people. Because you're doing something, you're part of a group, so you're automatically teamed up with people. We have lots of fun teaching people how to do it. I had to learn just last summer. This summer, uh, I'm now in my second year, so I'm kind of a pro. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> but it's lots of fun, yeah. Uh, yeah, and lessons are mandatory. So if you want to become a, mem a member of the club, you have to take three mandatory lessons before you can start playing on, in our leagues. Well, we have to throw the jack first. And uh, once we do that, that sets up the line and then we all take turns throwing our bowl. Same thing as bocce. And uh, the idea is to get your bowl closer to the jack. But a little secret about lawn bowling that a lot of people don't know is that the bowl is not actually round. It's not perfectly round. And it's heavier on one side than the other. And as it slows down, it will curl towards the, the, right, the way that you throw the ball mid-season right now so the, the, the club is already full we have about uh, 40 people waiting to play so at seven o'clock what happens is that we draw teams and uh, a fun thing about our league is that you don't play with the same people every week and and you're not committed to a team you come when you when you can and then so when you show up you put your name on the table and then we take all the names and we draw them from the hat which forms the teams for that night so you're playing with different people every week meeting new people and uh, that way two people don't feel committed that they have to be here every Thursday so that's a fun thing about our league. Alright folks well thanks for stopping by once again this is Emily Ann Fraser for Outlook TV and uh, thanks for juggling your bowls with us. We're going to take you over to Nanaimo now. It's time for Pride over there. There's so much Pride it's exploding all over the lower mainland. Welcome to our coverage of the 2017 Nanaimo Pride Parade. I'm Fiona Shedden. My name is Matt Carter. Very excited to see uh, the people, the energy, the sights, the sounds, the colors, uh, citizens and organizations here coming together to celebrate Pride here in Nanaimo. Yes, but I thought we had a third co-host. We're supposed to have a third somewhere around. Wait, yeah, exactly. just a second. Oh my goodness. Is it really you? <gasps> Fiona. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, the unstoppable Connie Smith. <laughs> and I'm here in Nanaimo and I'm so happy to be here. It's pride, my darlings. It's pride. In tradition for most broadcasts is to finish off the broadcast with a rap, but our tradition is to have a rap a little bit early on. So to night, night, yeah, but night, pride. 
Whether you're in the parade or watching from the side, we can all agree that it's great to be at Pride. It doesn't matter your gender or your orientation. Let's all have some fun and enjoy the celebration. I got my rainbow hat. I got my co-host, Connie and Matt. Now tell me, my friends, what could be better than that? So please get ready for some of the very best sights you've ever seen. It's the Nymo Pride 2017! Hey, Nymo, are you having a good Pride? Tell me what pride means to you. Pride means inclusivity. It means I'm proud of this wonderful town, and it means diversity, and God, you see it everywhere today. It's fabulous. My name is Vicki Smudge. I'm also Rick Myers, president of Nanaimo Pride, and we are so happy you are all here. I'm born and raised in this town, and let me tell you, growing up sometimes wasn't pretty. Not as pretty as it is today. Happy Pride. Thank you guys so much. Is this the first time that you've been at Pride? This is my first ever Pride event anywhere, so I'm pretty stoked to be here. This is my second time. Puppy, uh, is this your first time to a uh, Pride event? Yes, for me. It is. Last year was my first time. I had never been involved in anything like this before. His voice is soft. I guess he's just a little hoarse. What's taking you so long? Honestly, I have no idea, but I'm really glad that I've come because I've cried about five times already. This kind of thing just makes me want to start dancing more than more than crying, but like, I'm definitely on the same page there. Are you having a good day? This is a blast. This is most fun I've had in a long time. Hey, Woo! It's time to take a little break now. No, Rebecca. Yes, Robert, we have to. It'll be small. Hold me. It's okay. We're P Flag Vancouver, and you're watching Outlook TV. While in Victoria, the Outlook TV crew was provided services from the following companies. Gayvan.com Travel Marketing. LA Jet flies between Victoria and Vancouver day and night, rain or shine. Now offering free parking and shuttle service for passengers at all terminals. For flight schedules and bookings, call 1-800-665-4354 or visit helijet.com. Welcome back. You're watching Outlook TV. And now we're going to get literary. Mmm, time for some elocution lessons there, Rebecca. What do you have for us? We're off to Victoria. Ooh, let's see it. We're at the Ambrosia Conference Center in Victoria, British Columbia for Pride in the Word. And Pride in the Word is the largest Pride literary festival in Canada, and we're here to talk to the host and some of the writers. I was walking down the street when a stranger in a passing truck screamed out, Hey, pickle farmer! Which surprised me as I wasn't wearing my gum boots or overalls. None of my usual pickle farmer paraphernalia. Well, we're doing uh, Pride in the Word, which I think has been going on almost 20 years now, and it's the largest single literary, uh, like queer uh, literary event at a Pride in Canada. So it happens every year. Great crowd, and uh, we're just going to be having a seven writers tonight, and it's a you know full room. As one farmer who just loves stuffing jars with pickles, though he often struggles with the last one. I whisper, just relax, breathe easy, and that pickle will slide right in. Can you tell us a little bit about your style or genre or something? Oh boy, uh, lots of naughty stuff. But I also have written books about the Titanic and written books about fast food, so I'm, uh, I like to consider myself like a gay uh, Pierre Burton. Of pride in there, I do. But I, no more of it no more. I live in Victoria and I write books mainly for kids and teens. And my newest book is a non fiction book about pride. Um, all my other books are all novels. So, this is a, I've done 20 novels and one book of non fiction. So, but the one I'm going to speak about tonight is my non fiction book about pride. In the 1960s, there weren't many public places where LGBT people could gather. New York, which had one of the largest gay populations in North America, actually had a law 
that made it illegal for restaurants and bars to serve them. It was illegal for a man to dance with another man or to wear clothing intended for the opposite sex. A woman could be arrested if she were wearing fewer than three pieces of feminine clothing. The kids all look really confused when I say that. <laughs> my, my book, Pride, Celebrating Diversity and Community, is a kids' book for age 9 to 14. Um, recently received a Stonewall honor from the American Library Association. So I was just down in Chicago um, a couple weeks ago uh, for the award ceremony for that, which was incredibly exciting and uh, really moving to be part of. There was a lot of wonderful books represented there, so that was one. It's also kind of connected to Stonewall because I actually do tell the story of the Stonewall riots in the book itself. So I've been visiting schools and talking to kids and sharing that little part of our queer history. Twelve-year-old Harriet Cunningham lives with her family on Vancouver Island. When she was born, everyone thought she was a boy, but she never felt like one. As a young child, Harriet wanted to grow her hair long and wear dresses. I've always known I was a girl, even when I was considered to be a boy, she explained. In my dreams, I was never a boy. The book came out last April, and since then I've had the opportunity to visit schools in Ontario, in Quebec, um, around BC, uh, and talk to many kids from age from grade three, four, right up through high school, um, about the history of Pride, about you know who some of the people that make up the diverse community that celebrates Pride are, and a little bit about you know how kids can support um, yeah, social justice in general, but working towards LGBTQ rights specifically. And I'm going to end with Zia's words about what pride means to her. Pride is a bunch of people getting together to say that they're different and they are okay with that. <laughs> We're off to New Glasgow, Nova Scotia. The saltiest of gays appear in this coastal story. I thought it was just a big gay affair. It is a big gay affair, but on the coast. Oh, a big salty gay affair. All right. Mm. We're in New Glasgow, Nova Scotia for the 2017 edition of Jake and Sean's Big Gay Affair at the Glasgow Square Theatre. Let's hear what it's all about. Oh, yeah. oh my God, we're glad to be back oh. here in Pictou County with you people. Hello. Yes. <laughs> Woo! I did drag for, um, for Halloween once as Shania. <laughs> and um, then I left and I thought, I really want to do like a, a show. Like I think this could be a really interesting show. So then I thought, well, who am I going to partner with? And then obviously Sean came to mind. I came to Sean, and then it just kind of flourished after that. It just be took on the life. We're Rula and Bula. We're Picto County Dulas. We're here when it's time for the baby to come out. We'll the way I describe the show to friends or to people who've never been there, I say it's a bit like Mad TV or it's a bit like Saturday Night Live and it's becoming more like that, but that's also interspersed with music, yeah. correct? Yeah. This show, for me, it pushed me out of my comfort zone because I've been out for a long time, but not out like that, not out like where you become the face of something, and that's, in a way, what this show has done because your name is in the newspaper, right? And in, in a small town, that's an important factor. I'm crying for you, you should be crying too. There's a future, you're crying for high. The last show we did, I got a chance to share a song that I wrote in 1985 at the heights of the AIDS epidemic. And that was very meaningful for me because I've never, I, I recorded a CD in 2013, but I didn't get that song on the CD. So it was the first time that I actually shared that with the public. And it was, it was a, a big moment for me. I'm gonna rent myself out as a crier. I'll cry till the heavens turn black. My sister act outfit, which I actually borrowed the idea from a queen in England named Bella Berserk. And it's, uh, it's where I manipulate these two puppets, and one's Whoopi Goldberg and the other's the little, the little girl, and, and we do a trio. It's the only thing I lip sync. You say Ms. Tugwell defaced your tattoo of Jesus with an ice scraper this past January at your home in the Twin Rivers trailer court. We go oh, from nurse to ball gowns to a jean dress for the Drankins, and it's a variety of outfits from glamour to country folkish type thing. Um, it's a lot of fun, the, the quick changes. I, lo I love doing the quick changes. Am I dreaming, stupid, thinking ahead by Cupid? No 
I'm Jake Chisholm. And I'm Sean McLean. For Outlook TV. In New Glasgow, Nova Scotia. Everybody's favorite group, P Flag, had a barbecue. Throw on something to the Barbie, because we're going to hear about it from Angus. We're here at the junction in Davie Village in Vancouver for P Flag's annual summer barbecue fundraiser. Now, P Flag is a well respected organization in the LGBTQ2 community that isn't entirely made up of LGBTQ people. And we're here to find out all about it. P Flag stands for Parents, Families, and Friends of LGBTQ+. In the past, it was lesbians and gays, but obviously our world has changed a lot in the last 20, 30 years. Uh, we've been in Vancouver since 1989 as an active chapter, so we're actually the second oldest chapter in Canada types of meetings we have have changed enormously. Uh, in 2000 it was the age of Will and Grace, it was Ellen had come out just a couple years beforehand. Now when people come to meetings it's how do I manage uh, hormones for my child who's coming out, um, what about you know non-binary issues, like all types of things that we would never have dreamed about talking about in 2000. So. We're going to raise money today. That's what we're here to do. So this is our annual fundraiser. Uh, truthfully, we haven't done one in two years, but we're here today to make up for lost time. So um, the fundraising that we do is to help support the chapter. So it's very, you know, month to month needs. Things like the rental of our uh, space for meetings, uh, for our phone, and any of the other incidental uh, expenses that we have. And, um, I joined P Flag uh, because I have a gay son who I'm very proud of and I wanted to support him and also offer other families some encouragement and support for when they find out that they have a child that's LGBTQ. A lot of times when people come to PFLAG, especially parents when they, when they show up at a meeting, they are scared, um, they are sometimes upset, sometimes you know, their, their child coming out, it, it conflicts with their religious beliefs, so there are lots of different issues that people come to us with. Uh, what we try to do is to help them see that this is something that their child or their loved one did not choose, this is who they are. And so it's an opportunity for them to embrace who they are for the very, really for the very first time. Actually, I joined because I knew my son was gay from a really early age and I just got really tired of waiting for him to come out to me. So I think he was about maybe 15 and I asked him if he'd ever heard of P Flag, which is Parents, Family and Friends of LGBTQ. And he said no, he hadn't heard of it. And I said, well, would it be okay f with you if I joined? And he said, yeah, that would be fine. So he, he never did come out to me, he said there was no point. So I always tried to help make him feel safe growing up and tried to have gay friends and let him know that I accepted him no matter what. We have to take another little break now. Break. Break. <laughs> break. 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 Hi, I'm Vicky Smudge. And I'm the unstoppable Connie Smudge. <laughs> Happy Pride, Victoria. Victoria. You're watching, actually, you're watching this on Outlook TV. TV. <gasps> While in Victoria, the Outlook TV crew was provided services from the following companies. Gayvan.com Travel Marketing. LA Jet flies between Victoria and Vancouver day and night, rain or shine. Now offering free parking and shuttle service for passengers at all terminals. For flight schedules and bookings, call 1-800-665-4354 or visit helijet.com. Welcome back. You're watching Outlook TV. We're going to take you now to a story of Roberts. That's right. I covered a nice little story called Stop Smoking and Start Knitting, where you get some Scottish sensibilities down at XY Club. What's better than some down-home Scottish advice, you ask? How about throwing a few friends into the mix? I'm here at XY to check out Stop Smoking, Start Knitting, the variety show being put on by Jamie Smith. Let's go in and check it out. Oh my goodness, what, what's this? This is a suspension bridge. What is this? It's a net. It's a net. Oh. I would say it's a night of... Motherly love, it's like 
just coming into my living room for some love, some laughter, and maybe a sing-along or two, dear. <laughs> Why is knitting so important to me, Robert? I would say, as I said before, it's like a meditation. It really keeps you focused in the here and now, dear. And you can produce beautiful things, dear. And now, after taking my e-course, you don't smoke anymore, do you? Isn't that whatever? My academy, other academies all around the world. could give just one piece of advice to future generations, Robert, I would say, and it sounds a bit cheesy, you know, but honestly, utilise the power of love, dear. This night, after all, is about love. Have you learned a lot from me? The eye. I knew it. Well, Julie's a little bit forceful, but you didn't see that in the show. And you don't really get, you know, inspired to join so much as guilted to join. So, uh, but I always have such a grand time doing music. I think music should be done all the time by everybody. So when I get a chance to play, I just took it. What's the connection to the queer community for this show? Well, if you saw the show, you'll see that just tonight, Julie has outed me on stage. So the connection is rather new uh, and a little bit real, uh, but it's uh, probably because of her boys, both of them were being gay. And uh, Julie has always been such a lovely mom and supported them right through anything they ever wanted to do. If you were gay, oh my God, that would be okay. I mean, cause hey, I love you anyway, Again, having just been outed on stage, uh, I have to embrace and celebrate who I am a little bit more. And I think that that's what I take away from it. And I hope that the audience gets a seminal personal truth that maybe comes to them in a loving way. We are going to put this show on in Montreal in November, dear. And, um, oh, it's going to be a big one. All my friends are there and they'll be there and my knitting. I have a knitting academy, Robert. I have knitting. I have a knitting school and there's divisions of that all around the globe, Robert. Left on the dark in the city. Woo! What a hoot. This variety show had it all. Scottish advice, show tunes, drag queens, comedy, you name it. Stop smoking, start knitting. Check them out on Facebook if you want to look at their upcoming events. I've been Robert McKay for Outlook TV. Thank you so much for joining us. Because you can never have enough pride, let's go to Victoria for theirs. The Queen's capital of British Columbia gets extra queenie with some pride covered by our very own Angus. We're in Victoria for Victoria Pride and there's no better way to rev things up than with the Dykes on Bikes. Let's go! Victoria's first parade, uh, there's been some debate. Um, I thought it was 93 and they got the permit and it went to the legislature and I think there was like 200 of us who marched there. I roller skated, but hey. Wow. Victoria is so amazing. This energy is intoxicating. It's amazing. So much joy. And it's wonderful to be here and be able to express one joy, more joy, always joy. I'm saying Outlook TV here. Victoria Pride Festival is bigger and better than ever. They have 92 entertainers, two sound stages, 25 food trucks, and 150 exhibitors. I am Ms. Eldon Barron. And my name is Peach Cobbler. We are all the way from Vancouver over that little pond over there, and we're so, so thankful to be here to host this gorgeous Pride. It's a real honor to be here on the island. We love coming over here. And, and what are you doing here? We are hosting the, the fabulous beer garden stage. So uh, you see this gorgeous uh, beer garden behind us. Uh, there's a beautiful show put together by the Pride Society, and we are hosting it. See my name, you know who I am, I'm too high. Hey. People
people here in Victoria, I mean, honestly, you cannot choose a better audience to perform for. They're just so present, they're so alive, they send so much love through their eyes, and sometimes their hands if you talk to them right. I'll stand barefooted in my old backyard with a baby on my hip, cause I'm a red dick drag queen. I ain't no high class fraud. I'm going to be um, singing a song up on stage called Redneck Drag Queen because I ain't no high class broad. Okay, now I heard in your name, the, the last name is Smudge. Any connection to Connie Smudge? Oh, it's Connie Smudge. Did that's I hear my name? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, Connie. Connie is short for convenience. And Vicky is short for victorious. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can't wait to see you both on stage. Oh, thank you. We love you. We've been doing this for 25 years, Angus, and we couldn't be happier to be back on Vancouver. We're not even 25 years old. Oh, We're in the parade. We saw you earlier. Yes, we were. It was wonderful. There's more participants each year as we go on. Every year gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, I think that um, everyone's stepping up to the plate and really making it a fabulous pride parade. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have for this episode of Outlook TV, but never fear, we'll be back. Oh, we'll be back, and we'll be back with more people, because we're looking for more volunteers to join us here at Outlook TV. So if you're in any of the nooks and crannies across this great country, please join us by shooting us an email. And you can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and all of those social media things. Yeah, all the modern social tweets and stuff. <laughs> we're hip, we're young, and we're with it. Aren't we, Rebecca? Sure, I'll go with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Rebecca Wyman. And I'm Robert Mackay. Stay, Stay fabulous, fabulous, Canada. Canada.